Welcome back to Master and Gaming Studios. I'm Craig. And I'm Connor. And today we'll be going over the leader of the Tyranids, the Hive Tyrant. We're going to be going through all of his basic loadouts, all the weapons you can take, some tactics of what different ways to play them, just so you guys, both new and old, can get the most out of these awesome models on the tabletop. If you'll find this video useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps out a young and small channel like us. With that being said, let's get into the Hive Tyrant. Alright guys, so picking up with the Hive Tyrant, we're going to go over its base stats first. Now it has two different sets of movement, depending on if it has wings or not. So without wings, the you can see at the middle guy here, he starts at a movement of nine inches. And when he gets down to, how many wounds is it? When he gets down to six wounds, from six wounds to four wounds, he has seven inches. And three wounds to one wound, he has a move of five inches. Now with wings, it starts at 16 inches, down to 12, then down to eight. Uh, its strength is always six, which is a not great. Sort of his biggest issue. Yep. Uh, toughness 7, which is what you would expect from a bulkier bug. Uh, starts at 12 wounds, 4 attacks base, leadership 10, obviously, and a 3 up armor save. Also noted, he does have, as we'll go down to his abilities, we'll pass over his war gear. War gear for now, we'll get into that in the future slides. But his abilities, he is a synapse creature, of course. He has shadow in the warp, of course. Uh, for Hive Tyrants, their synapse range is 18 inches instead of 12. Uh, if you take the wings on him, you can technically put him in reserve in the swooping assault. I highly not don't. Too, not too often that you'd want to do that. This. Yeah. Uh, I don't know many issues as to why you would. Maybe if you're playing Jormungandr, you could do it with their deep striking abilities, but. That's about it. In general, we say probably don't. Stick him on the table, you give him wings, he's plenty fast. Even without wings, he's nine inches is great for a foot model. And if you're playing with the amount of terrain you should be, um, you can hide him. Turn yeah, one. a small hive, small hive tyrant can hide pretty Put well. him behind something, he's not a huge model. This model does have death throws, so if he dies on a six, he does D3 mortal wounds to everything within three inches. And most importantly, the psychic barrier, he does have a four invuln save all the time. Saving grace. Yes, absolutely. Back when Hive Tyrants didn't have this, it was really rough for them. Really rough. Also note here, uh, from Blood of Ball, we have our adaptive physiologies. Between all of the monster ones, the only one you're ever really going to use on the Hive Tyrant is Murderous Size, which is plus one strength, damage, and an extra minus one AP to one of his melee weapons. And I would say it's useful all the time. Like 99% of battles for it's him? It's pretty good. Yeah, if you want to deck out a Hive Tyrant for close combat, you're going to want you're going to have to use it to make him yeah. competitive. To get um, to strength 7, pretty yeah. much. Otherwise, I mean, you can play him as support and you don't need it. Save the adaptive physiologies for other things. Yeah, that's true. We'll go over it later, but there's a couple different builds you can use. Yep. But uh, last thing to go over for the base Hive Tyrant is he is a Psyker. He can learn and use two powers a turn. Yep and deny one power per turn. Correct. All right, well, let's get into the weapons and upgrades. This is the real meat of the Hive Tyrant. Yeah, here. he's probably one of the most versatile ways you can upgrade him. Not yep. every way is great, but they all have their Options. uses. Yeah. yeah. So your first one, you can do Siding Talons. You can take one or two sets of these. If you take two sets, you get an extra attack, which is great. Uh, the Strength User, so only six. AP minus three. Flat three damage, and with all siding towns, you can reroll hit rolls of one. Yep. Uh, monstrous rending claws, strength user, AP minus three, damage D three, and you get to reroll failed wound rolls. Yep. So it, another decent ish option. The best one about the rending claws is that they are free. Yeah. So if you want a cheap, cheap hive turn, but still some sort of close combat punch, uh, the rending claws are a good choice. Also to note on here, it's not on the slide, but if you roll a six on the two wound with the running claws, it goes to a flat three damage and it's yep. AP minus five. So yeah. It, extremely deadly. Extremely deadly. Yeah. 
Uh, the next one we have Monsters Bone Swords. Again, strength user. AP minus two, damage three, and you get one extra attack for taking them. It is important to note that you cannot take two pairs of Monsters Bone Swords and get two extra attacks. Oh. It's the Tyranid Curse. We are not Space Marines. We cannot wield two sets of the same weapon and get two extra attacks. Right. It's just, just one, and that's, unfortunately, it's the way it is written in the FAQ, so we're stuck that way. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the last one is the Monstrous Lash Whip plus Bone Sword. It is still Strength User, AP minus two, D3 damage. Damage three. Oh, damage three. Yep. And it can still attack, oh yeah, so if he has the, it's because the Lash Whip, right? The Lash Whip gives him oh, that. The Lash Whip allows him to attack after he's killed in close combat. Yeah. So. The only, the only downside with it is you have to fight on your bottom bracket. So right. You're hitting on fours. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's not the worst thing if you're hitting on fours. Don't count on it being like a saving grace or anything. It's, it's a little extra. It's a little something you could do. Yeah. It doesn't hurt. If you're going to take bone swords and lash with bone sword, yeah. that could be good. Right. He also has a couple ranged weapon options. He's got the heavy venom cannon, which is 36 inch range, D3 shots. Strength 9, AP minus 2, damage 3, and it is Blast. Uh, he's got the Stranglethorn Cannon. This is kind of the anti-infantry versus the anti-tank. 36-inch mm -hmm. range, D6 shots. Strength 6, AP minus 1, 2 damage, also Blast. You can also do the twin Death Spitters with Slimer Maggots, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that is what the Fly Rants what, tends to use? Yep, so the Slimer Maggots is the, the higher AP version. Right, so with the Slimer Maggots, it's an 18 inch range, six shots, strength seven, AP minus one, one damage, and that's for one of the guns. One set, so because you can take two of them. Right. Yep, it's So you shots. could have 12 shots there as well. Correct. And then the last range weapon is Two twin death spiders again, but instead of slimer maggots, they have brain leech worms. Mm -hmm. And the difference there is double the shots. Yep. Double the shots. So you get 12 shots per gun. It's only strength six, AP minus zero, one, one damage. damage. But yeah, so hmm. if you take two of them, they're the same price either way. But hmm. if you take two of them, you're going 24 shots less AP, or yeah. you're going for um, 12, 12 shots. shots more AP. The 12 shot one is pre, I mean, it's okay for going after tanks because you're wounding on fours and you got some AP. But against infantry, you think you'd usually... I, I like the higher volume of attacks. Yeah, it seems like it'd do a little more damage. You can put the two command point strategy and pathogenic slime, and now you have 24 damage two attacks going in. Right. Which, again, you're going to mm. get two, three, four up saves against it, depending on what you're up against. But sure. against, like, intercessors, as yeah. long as they're not in cover... With 24 shots, you're probably going to kill a couple of them. Yeah. So, it's cool. Okay. Uh, other upgrades the Hive Tyrant can take, of course. We've got Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands. The OG Both upgrades. of which I would highly recommend if you're taking a close combat monster. Yeah. Might as well. Might as well. They're cheap. All right. Now we'll get on to the Relics. There's a lot of Relics in the Tyranid Codex and in Blood of Ball. Uh, we kind of broke them up into three categories here. There are more. There are plenty of relics you can also use to have fun with your Hive Tyrant, but these are just some of them that we picked out that we think you guys should probably look at if you want to uh, have some fun with the Hive Tyrant. But definitely do your own research. Check these out in the Codex. Yeah. So we'll start off with the key kind of damage relics. The sides of Tyran are behemoth specific. They give you plus one attack, plus one strength. They are AP minus three, damage three, and on a six to hit, they are an additional attack. Granted, you do have to roll for that attack. Sure. But it's it's another one. It's good if you want to play um, Scything Talons and you're already in Behemoth. Definitely recommend it. We will. Stay tuned to the end. Touch on this in a full build. But yep. Just showing it off. Second would be the Ma Claws of Thyrax. You think that's how you say it? Yep. Yeah. That's how I say it. Uh, it gives you rerolled failed to hit rolls in the phase after you slay a model. So that's saying once you slay even a single single model a single guardsman you get re-rolled failed to hit rolls yep oh. it's comes it it harkens okay. back to the old preferred enemy remember that from oh yeah six seventh edition wow uh, so i haven't that, thought about that for that is the, the years the old rule is that he kills something with these claws and then he mm. like you know gains a bit of knowledge gains, yeah knows how to go after that enemy 
and now he he's better at killing them. That's cool. That's that's actually fluffy too. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So they're good if you're taking them on a, a simple rending claw. Tournament. Yeah, like a cheaper one. Okay. Uh, then the third and last key damage relic is going to be Pathogenesis. Yep. It's a plus eight inch range, or no, it's an eight inch range plus to eight inch range. You're okay. Right. To re-roll a single hit and wound. So this goes on to one of your guns. Your guns, okay. Um, ideally, I would use this on either the Stranglethorn Cannon or yeah. even better, the Venom Cannon. Yeah. Because the, the Venom Cannon, it's D3 shots, so there's a chance you only get one. But with these built-in re-rolls, you're more likely to at least get one shot through. Yeah. If not more. Which is all you can really hope for with a... And yeah, and then at a plus eight inch range, you're at 44 inches, so you can really hit anything on the table. And yeah, it's cool. Keep your distance. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's fun. Next, we have support relics. The first one we have is the Resonance Barb, one of the best relics of the Tyrant Codex. Uh, this will let your High Tyrant cast and deny an additional power, as well as get plus one to cast. Mm. So, with that, I mean, he knows three powers. Um, now we can cast all three of them, oh, and yeah. he can deny two, and he gets plus one to cast. So now is, I mean, if you want to go full offensive, you can do smite, psychic, scream, and a support power. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great relic to do. Okay. Uh, the other support relic is going to be chameleonic mutation. You can only take it if you're using kraken. It gives you minus one to hit yourself in the shooting phase. So anything shooting him will be minus one in the shooting phase. Yeah. Great one. Um, Very probably solid. want to use it on one of your more close combat ones, but yeah. any any hive tyrant really uh, minus one to hit is going to be great. To keep I would say on. those those last two that we listed might be might be the top two. I don't. I know. think I think we'll they are it, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, out of all of them, I they're might my be the two best. favorite unless you're playing some the sides of tyrant is pretty fun. Right. But, yeah. We'll get to it. Some other ones that are fun, maybe not as competitive, but you know, you can still have fun with them. The Venom Thorn Parasite, this one again, just like the Pathogenesis, goes on to one of your big guns. So it always gets max shots. So your right. Stranglethorn is always six shots and your Venom Cannon is always three shots. Now if you have if you have two guns as seen here, it only gives that to work. one of them. It only works because you can only take one of the venom cannons or one of the. Oh cannons. right. So okay. I t I went back and forth putting this at ahead of pathogenesis, mm. but I think the built-in rerolls is almost better than just having three hits to begin with. I bet it would. If you did the math on it, I bet it would be I think a little it's just better. More consistent, maybe yeah. not, but knowing dice, I think it's better to have a guaranteed reroll than not. Yeah. Okay, uh, the second competitive or non-competitive but kind of fun one would be the Young Garl Factor. This is a very old school one for anyone who played in like fifth, probably yeah. even before. Uh, it used to, used to be a little different, but now it gives you, you roll a D3, and depending on what you roll, you either get plus one strength, plus one attack, or plus one toughness. And you do that at the beginning of the game? Beginning of the fight phase. So it changes every, every phase. Every fight phase it changes. So it still does change every phase. Yep. That's, it's not, I don't think I'd say it's good, it's but not, it's pretty fun. It's fun. So now yeah. your hive tyrant could get up to your strength yeah. eight, or you could get five or six attacks, or you could be toughness, toughness eight. Toughness eight. If you could control it, I would do if you toughness control, eight all the time. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, last one. If you guys have seen my power combos video, if not, you should watch it. Little little ding right up. We'll go here, but yeah. go watch it. We touched on the Reaper of Obliterax and being able to double damage on five or six pluses, which again, not competitive, but you have the potential to kill a knight. In <laughs> yeah. Which, like we said, it's not competitive. That's but, pretty fun. But it's fun. That's pretty fun. Yeah. All right, so now let's move on to the psychic powers for the Hive Tyrant. I broke them up into two categories here. We kind of have the offensive powers and the support powers. And really, how which powers you pick will depend on what role you want your Hive Tyrant to do. I do think it is important to say, though, that all of these powers have use. They all have use. They're yeah. they're all viable, and no matter what you want to use. I think for, for Tyranids, it's pretty well said that the psychic phase this is an important one Very. to really boost your army up a notch. Yep, absolutely. So it's just, you know, think of what other psychers you're going to have in your army 
and where they're going to be True. taking the roles. Yeah. Are you going to have a neurothrope that's just going to sit back and be support? Well, then yep. maybe your hive tyrant doesn't need all of the support powers. Right. But Throw them one of these. First for offensive, we have Unstoppable Hunger, which is just for Behemoth. Uh, it gives you plus one to wound. Great is that power. It? all phases or um, do we know how that works? It's just the fight phase. Just in the fight phase. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, Psychic Scream, it's basically just another smite. So... Yeah, D3 Mortal Wounds. And I guess there is another tag on it, but I rarely see it come up, is if your opponent is a Psyker and they take Mortal Wounds from it, you can basically kill one of their Psychic Powers. Right. That has come up, though. It has You've come stolen up. one of mine before, You've yeah. you Grey Knights, it can kill a power. Yeah, if you're fighting Eldar, Thousand Suns, Grey Knights, or any Chaos besides Corn, it could come up. It could come up, yeah. yeah. Uh, Smite, obviously, D3 Mortal Wounds. Uh, if you get a... 11 or 12, you get D6. Everyone knows about Smite, though. Yep. And then the last one, the Horror. Minus one to hit, le minus one to hit rolls for your opponent, uh, both shooting and close combat. Yep. And then minus one Leadership. I put this in the Offensive. It could, you could argue, it goes in Support. But in Offensive, I put it as, you know, you're going to be going with combat. You're probably going to want to put this on the models you're going up against. Yeah, right. Just to hinder them a little bit more. Yeah, I'd say that's the right spot. Second, we have the support powers. Uh, I would say maybe the most annoying one to fight against is Catalyst. Gives a simple five plus feel no pain to anything that you're... Anything within 18? 12 or 18 inches. 18 yeah. inches? Yeah. Great power. Just give feel no pain. It is huge on a large creature or even like a tough warrior squad or something tough like that. Warrior squad, big block of 30 gaunts. Even that can be annoying That's if you true. Want. Uh, Onslaught now, one of the best utility powers we have is it's got a lot of options here. So unit can advance and charge, which if they couldn't before, that's great. Yeah. They can also move and not take the pen penalty to firing heavy weapons, yep. which really will only come up in your hive guard for the most part. Yeah. Uh, but that's about it. And then you can advance and fire assault weapons with no penalty. Which it's is, a lot. It's a lot. For one power. For one power, rarely will it work on one unit. will take advantage of all of these at right. once. But, again, there's versatility. One Gives turn, you options. One turn it could go on your Hive Guard. One turn it could go on your big group of Gaunts. And, yep. Yeah. Next one is called Paroxysm. You cast this onto an enemy, and it makes it so that they always fight last in the combat phase. Which, as 9th edition has been building, it's showing to be more and more important. Because True. when ninth edition flips, so now whoever's going, whoever's turn it isn't, gets to pick the first unit to fight right. first. Right. This power has become a lot more useful and more fight first, fight last abilities have been showing up in the new ninth edition codexes, hmm. which is giving more and more prevalence to having proxies in yeah. your army. It's interesting. It became useful. more important. Yeah, yeah. back in eighth edition, no one, you never took this one. Unless, you didn't really need to unless you had a spare power to go. But. Right. Yeah. Cool. And uh, last, Synaptic Lure. Gives you re lets you re-roll all charges against a unit. So you cast it on the enemy. Yep, cast it on one enemy unit. Okay. Everything, this is the Kraken specific one. Yeah. There's no range to it. Um, That's scary. <clears throat> anything that charges that unit gets to re-roll their charges. Well, it's pretty perfect for Kraken. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. a great one. Wow. So those are the powers. Uh, definitely. Great powers as far as yeah stuff you can use goes so many different ways you can use them but yeah. again just look at what you want your hive tyrant to do and look at what other psychers you have in your army and then kind of determine what kind of role your hive tyrant will fill in the psychic phase now we've got some key stratagems there's a lot of them in the tier codex between the codex and blood of ball but we've picked out eight of them here that we think have some pretty good use specifically to the hive tyrant sure Broke them up into three categories. We have damage, utility, and support. So we'll get it. You want to start off with the damage ones? Sure. First for the damage ones is called Ferocious Appetite. It means in the fight phase, it lets you reroll failed wound rolls for one command point. Perfect. Simple and extremely powerful. Especially because the high pattern is pretty low strength. You're almost yeah. always wounding on Threes or fours. That's true. This might be one of your most used ones if you're using a foot tyrant. This, yeah, this 
this um, stratagem alone, just in the entire Tyrion Codex, is probably the most used one, in my opinion, if, yeah. if you're close combat. Probably. So the next one is Pathogenic Slime. This is two command points for plus one damage in shooting phase. And this does apply to all of your weapons. So if you're running a Venom Cannon or a Stranglethorn Cannon and Devourers, or Death Spitter, sorry, mm. then they both get plus one damage. Hmm. So if you're running, if you want to play a really good anti-infantry one, you could run the Stranglethorn Cannon. Yeah. So now you're at damage three on a D6 shot gun. <sighs> and your Death Spitters, you could take the six shot one or the yeah. 12 shot one there, sitting at damage two for all of those. So you just use the stratagem and it makes that model. That models. That model shooting. does. Yep. Wow, that might be the highest damage potential of the ones I know, at in, least. In shooting. In yeah. shooting, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll keep going, but yeah. Keep going. So another extra, <laughs> these first two have been very good so far. Uh, a third, not as used one, but also very good, is going to be War on All Fronts. I think we've talked about this in a previous we've video. We've talked this in a video or two. But... but it essentially, if you charge an enemy unit with a Tyranid that has fly and another Tyranid unit that does not have fly, Correct. you gain re-rolling ones to hit and to wound for both of your units that charged. Yep, you got it. I got it right. You nailed it. <laughs> and that's just for Leviathan. Leviathan, yes. Leviathan only. Uh, this is great for your Hive Tyrant because normally the hard part is having that fly unit that's yep. charging it. And because if you give it wings, it's it, perfect. Has, it has fly. Yeah. Now, maybe you're already rerolling ones because of the Scything Talons. And maybe you would use Voracious Appetite already. Mm. But I think the utility of it working for both and for other models. For one command point for too, command I should say. Point, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could, if you want to get really competitive, you yeah. take a Flying Hive Tyrant and take something like a Damacaron sure. or a Barbed Hero or a Scythe Hero Duel, something sure. big that yeah. doesn't get those rerolls. Now you give oh, and just rerolls to hit and wound for both models. And to all to the your... most powerful yeah. hitting things. Okay. Yeah. So also very useful. And the last one, we are one of the few codexes who have this stratagem. Yep. Is three command points, adrenaline surge, fight again. I would also say there's a few units throughout random codexes that have things like this. Yeah. Not just corn berserkers, although that's the the main thing that can. Yeah. Uh, I would say this has maybe the most use within Tyranids because it allows your like a hive tyrant is a perfect example. It allows him to fight again. Yeah. Anything gets to fight. Yeah. So great one. Uh, now we have two utility stratagems. Yeah. Uh, the first one, Overrun, for one command point, this is if you, you know, kill an enemy unit in the fight phase, instead of consulting, you get to take a movement phase. This is big, it's pretty significant. especially on the fire, because you could kill something, move 16 inches, and become out of line of sight yeah. beat from an enemy, because you can land on an objective, fire. land... Anywhere. Closer to a different enemy, yeah. It works still on the foot tyrant, but this is really big on the flyer. Just because you're getting your full movement. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, then the that was one command point yep. for that we should say, and the second one under utility that we have is called Power of the Hive Mind for one command point, cast an additional power. So yeah, if you need another power off, it's if, pretty simple. You if, just use it. Yeah. If you're in range, let's say you've got two important powers, but You've got a model that's got one wound left. One command point, you can cast Smite yeah. and kill something. Right. It, so there are times where it could come up. I used it to kill Gilliman in a tournament. It's got to be quite a feeling. It was, you it had was a great feeling. I lost the game moment. miserably. It it's fine. Last, last game of my tournament, lost it miserably. But You the, killed Gilliman. I killed Gilliman yeah. with a Smite. <laughs> that's pretty awesome, actually. A super Smite of all things. you got to take your wins where you can get them, <laughs> you me, guys. Just trust us on that. Okay, and the third and final uh, category here for our stratagems is support. The first one is Hive Instinct. For one command point, you give an additional D6 inches on the charge to other units. So we talked about this a little bit before. Yeah. So the Hive Instinct and Hunter's Drive are very similar. The way it works, a little bit explanation, it's that you roll an extra D6. Oh, right. So instead of giving two D6 on the charge, it's... 3d6 pick the two highest for charging right which can help out um it works you have to have 
the, a synapse creature, in this case our hive tyrant has to charge in, and then you pick another unit, and that unit gets to charge in as with, well. With, with the it's additional. It's basically charging in with the hive tyrant. But the key thing is a synapse creature has to charge. First. I see. Yeah. Gotcha. It's very situational, but you would be surprised how many times a hive tyrant and something else is charging in. Oh yeah, it so definitely happens. Come up. Yeah. Um, so to so it's to assure the second thing get gets in with the hive tyrant. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple ways, well, hold on. We'll go to the second one first. Yep. Hunter's drive is the same thing except it's for shooting. Right. So it's a six inch bubble. So you can, basically your hive tyrant kills an enemy model. And now any units within six inches of him that are charging that enemy unit that you killed get the additional D6 to charge that unit. Okay. It's basically like his gun is like a, a ranging shot on right. the enemy. Which it makes sense if you put these together, Hive Instinct and Hunter's Drive, it's like the synapse creature is pointing the lesser little, creatures. Yeah. yeah, perfect for getting, I mean, if you yeah. got a big block of Hormagons, maybe, you know, you're, you got a 10 inch charge, but getting an extra guide or die in there. Yeah, Yeah. what well, could make a complete difference. It, they're they're ones you have to think about and you have to plan around and they don't always like come to your head like oh hey i can do that but there are situations where these are awesome and we'll actually probably do a video in the future touching on some of these movement stratagems yeah. and ways to use them uh stay tuned to that because tyranids have a lot tyranids have a lot in movement phase they do all right so that's it for stratagems mm -hmm. and now we'll get into three common builds, and then we'll come into our one bigger build. We have one very special build at the very end, so stay tuned. Yes. Uh, you want me to start here? Yeah, you go got ahead. the the once dreaded uh, DACA fly rent. For those who don't know, DACA is what orcs say when they're shooting their guns. Yeah. So it means the gun fly rent. Usually comes with two sets of devourers with brain leech worms, which is the Higher volume. Yep. The high, yeah. Higher volume shots, and you can swap it out for HVC. Heavy venom cannon. Heavy venom cannon, which I knew. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is basically this little guy you see here. He's got the wings and a lot of kind of smaller fire firepower. A lot of DACA. You don't want him. This hive tyrant. He's not going to combat. He's going to be casting his support powers, keeping his distance from the enemy, cleaning out screens, shooting small. Units, shooting or, squads. Or if you want to swap out one of the guns for a, one of the cannons, then True. he can do some damage with that too. It's not a bad option. As yeah. Well. He's kind of a in between. Like he, he does damage, but he also is supporting yeah. with the DACA flyer. So then the Smash Tyrant. So this is the basic Smash Tyrant. There's a couple versions, but this is the basic one. Two sets of Scything Talons, Murderous Size, Adrenal Glands, and Toxin Sacks. The two sets of Siding Talons gives him five attacks. Mm -hmm. He's ruling ones to hit, which is great. Murderous Size allows him now to get up to strength seven. Which is, which is huge. Pretty necessary. Now he can actually take on a tank. Yep. And he's AP minus four and a flat four damage. Toxin Sacks give him damage five. It's good. It's good. It, How many points do we know? Uh, a Smash Flyerant. I will put the points in for you guys to see, but I believe Ding. it is about 220 sure something like that 215 seems legit they're seems pretty like high tyrants are you know they're, they're pretty cheap but yeah it's not too much they're not too bad and third we have the cheap support flying hive tyrant and now this is similar to the daca one except will you maybe just have one one set of guns here yeah right so He'll have monstrous running claws and one set of devourers. Yeah. You could also give him adrenal glands if you want and toxin sacks, but it's how cheap you want to make him how, really. Yeah, how cheap do you want him? Yeah. This guy really, he is he's support. He's gonna shoot a couple things. Synapse. He's gonna provide synapse. He's gonna charge some things. He'll cast the psychic powers, but I mean this is really you just want a big monster yeah. that is on the table. He, I think this this build is under 200 points. He's probably like That's 180 great. or so. It's really not bad for his and stat line. The running know? claws are still, they're still not no laughing matter for no. a, a combat. Cut through space range still. And the 12 shots from the devourers or six, but at that point I'd probably go with the 12. Yeah. They still can clear out some screens and yep, stuff. Yep, definitely. Then we come to, well actually before we go to this one, again I'll pin, I'll, 
I'll, I'll pin it. I'll talk about it. Our power combo video we did last week has another build. So if you watch that one, you got five Hive Tyrant builds here. True. The one we're about to show you is a much more competitive, much more consistent, mm. reliable version yeah. of the Behemoth. Less Smash swingy. Tyrant, less swingy. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do him. He needs no introduction, but he is the size of Tyran. He is a... Sounds cool when you say it like that. Yeah. He is the size of Tyrant. He That's is cool. the size. So he is yeah. a flying hive tyrant. I mean, he could be foot, but he's a flying hive tyrant. Use him as a flyer. Use monster scything talons and then give him any other shooting weapon you want. Mm -hmm. um, you could go... I would go with either the heavy venom cannon or a death spitter option because then he can shoot in close combat with the death spitters. Ooh. But... Okay. Something there. Yeah. Give him murderous size. Give him adrenal glands and toxin sacks. And then most importantly, give him the size of Tyran Relic. The size of Tyran Relic, on top of everything else, now makes him strength 8, AP minus 4, damage 4, and if you roll 5 or 6. On the 2 wound. On the 2 wound, he's now damage 5 because of toxin sacks. Basically, a uh, heavy killer. <clears throat> he, killer of heavy things. Yeah, so yeah. some things are important. While these are scything talons, you do not get to reroll your ones to hit. So right. keep that in mind. These, they don't have, they're, they're scything talons, but they're different. It's their own thing. They have. To counter that, they give you sixes generate extra attack. So it's similar because it's still, you know, ones versus sixes. Yeah. Extra attacks in a way. Yeah. Um, what else? Plus he, one to wound? Plus one to wound. That's from Unstoppable Hunger. Right. So now you're going to be wounding knights on threes. Right. Which is great. So you build this, you use the psychic power that is the behemoth special one, Unstoppable Hunger. Mm -hmm. And you can make, on top of his insane stat line, you can also make him plus one to wound. Yeah. A knight killer. This is, this is your best smash flyer that you can build right now. In most consistent. Game. Most consistent. Yeah. yeah. If you want to go... Check out the other, the Reaper Hive Tyrant. He has more damage potential. But it's very swingy. But it is very swingy. Yeah. You could do four wounds. You could do 28. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty crazy. It's up to you guys to see how your dice do. Yeah, this is the Tyranid equivalent of, uh, I don't know if we should say that word, but a Smash Captain Smash for Captain. Space Marines. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he He's good. And he's got a four up in Von Save. You can still give him two psychic powers. So he could give himself a five up feeling of pain. Ooh. You true. could put give him the horror so he can make his opponent minus one to hit or make him fight last with paroxysm. Yeah. Uh, you could give him onslaught and now he can advance and charge. Yeah. We should point out this uh, he's the same price as a regular Fly rent, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, he is. He's, he's the same price, but all you have to do is just give him this relic and the psychic power. Yeah, he's great. Now, for those of you who are commenting right now, I know who you are. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Technically, yes, you could give him the warlord trait ah. for Behemoth yeah. to make him now damage six on rolls of five or six. It's a little weird. There are two camps of Tyranid players. There's a debate. There's a debate. Yeah. Rules as written, you can take one, a single warlord trait, and a single um, adaptive physiology, if you pay a command point, and put them on the same model. Rules as intended from GW's point of view, I really don't think that's what they were going for. I think right. the stratagem to give an additional... Um, uh, adaptive physiology was intended to, if you took one, now you can take an extra, but if you are reading the rule for rule yeah. and looking at them isolated, I see no reason why you can't do that. Maybe if you're going to mess around with that, just talk about it with your opponent if you're not in a tournament. If, yeah, if you're going to If you're just doing it for fun, you should probably talk about it yeah, with the person. Yeah, if you're going to a tournament, you might want to run through with yeah. the TOs and be like, hey, yeah. this is the situation. GW hasn't clarified anything. What do you think? Which, you know? the book's been out for a year now, so I think they're not going to clarify it. They're not going to touch it until, you know, the, the new, new codex, codex drops. Yeah. And in that case, all this could change. But yeah. As of right now. As of right now, 
technically you can make this a damage six hive tyrant which if that's the case rolls a five or six with all these attacks now we can do some real serious damage i think that might be the best that is the best the best hive tyrant if that is allowed but in again, your rule set again i like to say no because i don't think that was the intention i don't think and so i don't either. want to get into any sticky situations with it yeah but if your opponent's cool with you rocking around with these high damage hive tyrants yeah power to you especially if they're playing knights uh just do it <laughs> yeah. you know just do it it'll Maybe be good say no then true <laughs> that's true it's too strong well that has been our hive tyrant overview if you guys liked it please like and subscribe and hit the bell yes uh, it really helps out small channels like us seeing the the likes and the subscriptions go up it allows us to you know put more content out there youtube sees us as a growing channel and then they put the content out for more of you to view we are excited we're happy that this is growing we need keep needing your support otherwise you know it's been awesome and uh